Hi everybody, it's Loretta and welcome back to my channel. So, um, between my allergies and my batteries going dead, this is like the fourth try on this video. <laughs> so, hopefully we'll get it this time. So I'm back with um, part two of a series of 24. Um, this is my second block in the Crazy Quilt series that I'm doing. I'm coming on every month and showing you my finished block. Uh, I also said that if I got more than one done a month, I would come on in quicker so that this doesn't actually draw out for two years. <laughs> um, anyway, so I had a ton of fun with this block, and I'm actually kind of happy the way it turned out. I, I wasn't sure if I, you know, every time I start a new block, there's a point where I'm thinking this is ugly and it's not going to do anything. <laughs> and then, and then by the time you finish, you're like, well, okay, I recovered that pretty nicely. <laughs> and that's kind of how I'm feeling with this one right now. So anyway, I, um, I decided to make a fan. So I applied it down and did a little buttonhole stitch. Um, this is just like the fans that they use in um, sane quilting. I'm sure you've seen fan quilts or um, gram uh, Dresden plates or whatever. It's done in the same same way. Um, and I put a little bit of lace behind it. And then I just happened to have this in my stash. I don't even know where I got it from. But uh, it was just like the perfect thing to put on there. And then this is um, an antique button that came out of some of the stuff that my um, my daughter gifted to me. So, yeah. And then in this corner, I just did uh, some embroidery. And uh, I did some little uh, rice pearls and um, some little beads. It's hard to see, you know, against the toile. But, you know, you, have, you can't just... I mean, I guess you could make a solid... <laughs> A totally solid quilt but you know I like the texture and the images that come on some of the patterned fabric so that's just you know a trade-off that's the price you pay so here um, <clears throat> here I used a little bit of that trim that I love so much that when it runs out I'm going to cry <sighs> anyway <clears throat> I just cut the individual leaves off and uh, did an embroidered stem like thing and then um and then this is silk ribbon embroidery that I did here and then I just added some beads to it um but I, I love this sort of swoop like that it kind of gives the block some motion and it kind of gives your eye when you're looking at the whole block it gives your eye sort of like a travel path you know so um then I did uh, some feather stitch with some sequins. I love sequins and I use a ton of sequins. And I did some more embroidery down here. And this thing I got uh, from the antique mall for like a dollar. <laughs> it's just a pin. But when I saw it, it reminded me of like those um, big gilt mirrors that you would see like in the, like, I don't know, Downton Abbey or something. Some huge British home. So I thought, oh, that'll be perfect, you know. I put a little bit of lace on it and put it on a doily. And I, I did that sort of like, I don't know, like trying to mimic a sort of like a lady's hanky or something. Um, and I love this fabric. These fabrics, um, I found a couple of different ones. I mean, I've been um, collecting fabrics and stuff for this quilt for about two years before I even sewed the first stitch. And I kept coming across these fabrics that had, uh, I don't know, like po canceled postage marks and uh, travel kind of, that kind of thing, stamps and so forth. And I was like, this is perfect. It was almost like they were just making this fabric just for me. Um, and then the image, the original, you can hear my dog whining. <laughs> the original image... Um, you know, she's got like a, a trim right here on her hat, and her hat has feathers. So I thought uh, that I would um, mimic that with fringy stuff and some beads. And then her dress also had like these big flowers on there, so I did uh, some sequins on it. 
And then here's my button cluster. Now, I don't always do a button cluster, but uh, but I do love it. And it, it kind of balances the, the image. And, I, and it's hard to explain. Like, it draws your eye to the image, but at the same time, um, it also just gives, gives it more movement. And I'll show you what I mean. Um, so I used some sequins and some flower beads, uh, some buttons and some metal pieces, some silk ribbon, and some little beads. And then this corner down here, I just, I don't know, uh, I just kind of felt like this corner was too big and too plain, so I put this um, piece of trim on it. I actually avocado dyed this, and these little flower things I also avocado dyed. Um, there's some crystals on there and some more sequins. And so when you, if I can get it to get out without, pan out without showing you my filthy desk. <laughs> so when you look at the block, um, you know, you kind of, your eye sort of goes to here and then it swoops up. And then, and then it takes in everything else. And that's always kind of my goal with each block is to sort of have this movement somewhere. It might not be this pattern, it might be this pattern, but um, yeah, you, you kind of want, because the blocks are so obviously straight lines, you kind of want to, it, this sort of softens it and just makes it a little more pleasing to the eye. So, um, another thing I want to share with you, hang on one second. <clears throat> When I was at my Crazy Quilt retreat this past week, uh, a couple of, we had gone into some antique stores, of course, and uh, I saw these, um, they're typeset boxes, you know, and uh, I was just like, oh my god, those are so cool. I would love to have these because, I mean, you know, I, they're perfect, actually perfect for... Um, the little boxes that the Delica beads come in, <laughs> you know, and, and it's also, you can also use it for just, you could literally, get, when you got ready to work on a project, you could literally fill it all up with everything you wanted to use on that project. So I could use, I could put the buttons I want to use here and the beads and so forth and so on. And, uh, so anyway, I was like, oh, those are really cool. And I was shopping with my mother-in-law and another crazy quilter named Ellen. And the next day, I had gone shopping somewhere else, of course, because that's what you do at a retreat, right? Uh, and when I came back, these were sitting at my table. And Ellen and uh, another gal, Lisa, had gone back to the antique store and got these for me. So I just thought that was so sweet. And I absolutely love them, and I can't wait to use them. I also keep thinking <laughs> I could do an art piece on these, just, you know, but I'm not. I'm going to use them for storage. <laughs> so, anyway, I just wanted to share those with you because I thought they were really cute, and it's a kind of a neat idea. So, for next month, this is the block I'm going to bling up. And, um, so get a good look at it naked. <laughs> Because it's not going to be naked for long. I'm going to do some awesome things on it, I'm hoping. So, yeah. Anyway. So there you go. Um, that's what I've been up to this. And I'm working on a boho bag. And I'm working on uh, secret gifts for Roseanne. And that um, swap should happen at the beginning of next month sometime, but the swap with Roseanne. But anyway, so there you go. I'll see you next time. Have a great day, ladies and gents.